Hey guys, today we're going to start a brand new chapter and we're going to be on lessons or chapter 6 lesson 1 on powers and exponents. So, I am so excited. This is the beginning of kind of algebra for you. So, exponents. I'm also trying out a new screen. We'll see how it works. And then today's date is 128 2020. So let's start with a big old fatty number. Let's make him five and then we'll give him a little three. And we're gonna talk about what each of these pieces mean. Okay, so when I talk about powers and exponents, I'm what I'm looking at is considered a power. So let's go ahead and give him a definition. So this whole guy here is a power. And a power is a way to write a way to write a multiplication problem bet you didn't know that where the factors are the same now remember what factors are they're the numbers that are in a multiplication problem. The answer is called a product, okay? All right, so let's distinguish the other two guys. I'm gonna overlay this guy. So five is called the base, okay? And his job is he's the number that is multiplied by itself Repeatedly. So repeatedly means however many times the exponent tells you to multiply it by itself. Which brings us to our cute little three. And he's not the same uh, value as five because five is a whole number. Three is actually called an exponent. And an exponent tells how many times to multiply the base by itself. Okay. So in our problem here, we've got five and we're going to multiply it by itself by itself till I have three of them and then I do the math so 5 times 5 is 25 and then I have 25 times 5 and that equals 125 okay so normally we read numbers this way with exponents um, let's say we have 5 and then we'll have any exponent in general so what I'm going to do is highlight the exponent is n and I would read this as 5 to the nth I'm going to kind of circle that up in red power 5 to the nth oops wrong color sorry 5 to the nth power okay now, we do have two special exponents that don't get read that way, and that would be the one we just did, which was 5 to the, with the 3. We don't say 5 to the, he's kind of, would be different. Normally, we would say third power, but, because he's weird, but we don't say it because we read it this way instead. 5 cubed. So when I multiply a number by itself, by itself, that's called being cubed. And then we have another one, which is going to have the exponent of 2. And we don't say 5 to the second power. What we say is 5 squared. Okay. Now you think about it. When I take something to the third power, when I cube it, I'm actually looking at volume 
of a, what's a shape called a cube. And then when I multiply a number by itself, I'm creating a square. Okay, so think about it that way, and we'll discuss that more. So let's uh, throw in that word I had talked about earlier, the word factor. Make sure we have it down officially. And it's a term that is being multiplied by another value. Okay, so in a multiplication problem, so let's do a little example here. If I have 5 times 3, both the 5 and the 3 are factors. Okay? Um, now, let's talk about one more thing, and then I'll probably have to go to the next screen. Uh, let's talk about this idea of perfect squares. Now, I have a friend who teaches fifth grade, and she says this concept doesn't come up in the fifth grade curriculum. So this may be new for some of you, but this is something you really got to learn. So perfect squares, um, this is the product, so it's the answer, when multiplying a number by itself. So that would be to the second power or squared, okay? All right, um, let's do one more. I have some room. Let's put in perfect cube. Do this one. A perfect cube is the product when multiplying multiplying plying geez I'm having a hard time this morning a number by itself by itself So the product when multiplying a number by, oops, let's try this again, by itself, I'm going to erase this, I think the and needed to go there, there we go, and by itself, okay, so I'm going to go to my next screen, but this is still on your first page. So I'm going to talk about the three different uh, phases of exponents, okay? So first off, I'm going to start with this guy. He's called the exponential form. Now think about it. Exponential is an adjective version of exponent. So you're seeing the problem with exponents. Now, sometimes the book refers to this as the product as a power. So when we talk about powers, we got to see exponents. Then we're going to decide to start solving this problem. And so we would get something that looks like this. 5 times 5 times 5. That's what 5 cubed means. This is called expanded form. You're probably used to thinking about expanded form when you saw 132 and your teacher said write it as 100 plus 30 plus 2. That's expanded form. You may hear it as power as a product. Now here's what's funny. Product has two meanings. Product can mean a multiplication problem and product can mean the result of the multiplication problem. And then we do the math, and we get an answer. And that is called the standard form. So what we would work with is what's standard. 
So the standard form is what we get when we multiply it out. And oh, I'm not going to put quotes on him, sorry. Quotes go on the bottom. So we would call it the answer or the product. Okay. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add a sheet to glue at the bottom, which is something you guys really need to think about memorizing, because these are going to be the perfect squares up to 20 and the perfect cubes up to 10. And the reason why is the more you guys have in your head, the less time it takes to do math. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in. And that should be the bottom of your page. Now, some of you may write bigger, and this may take you over to the second page but I'm gonna to go to the official second page right now. Now you know it's an official page when you see the title. So here comes our title, Lesson 6-1, Powers and Exponents. And today's date is 1-28-2020. So we're gonna just do a couple of examples. Direct and say, sometimes it takes longer to write the directions and solve the problems. Write each, oh, sorry, each as the product of the same factor Okay, that is basically telling us to do the expanded form, okay? So I'm going to put that here, expanded form. Then find the value. So that's going to be what we call the standard form. So it's going to be given to you in exponential form, and then our job is to do the math out. Okay, so first, we've got 4 to the 4th power. That is going to be expanded to be 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. And again, you're going to see me use the dot to represent multiplication a lot more frequently. Now I'm going to go ahead and start solving this. So to solve this... Um, I'm just going to do some math. So I'm going to group these guys. I know that's 16. I'm going to group these guys. I know that's going to be 16. And then if I haven't memorized that 16 squared is 256, then I do the math off to the side. And I get 36, 9, placeholder 6, 1, 6, 5, 2. And there is my answer in standard form. Okay, next one. Let's have, ooh, look at this devil that I am. Let's throw some decimals in there. So we're going to expand it, and that's going to be 1.5 times 1.5. So you got to distinguish between a multiplication symbol and a decimal symbol. Now, if I've memorized what 15 times 15 is, then I know it's 225. Okay, so remember what you're going to do here is you're going to pretend that this is just 15 times 15. And then we'll go back and throw in the, the uh, decimal point into the final answer. So if you don't haven't memorized this, we'll do it off to the side, and we get 25, we get 7, placeholder, 5, 1, and we get 225. Now remember we got to count up how many digits came after the decimal point. I see one, I see two. So my answer also gets two digits after the decimal point. So my answer is two and 25 hundredths. Okay. Let's do a fraction. I'm going to take one half and we're going to cube it. So this is the same thing as saying one half. Oops, sorry. Forgot to change my cola. 1 half times 1 half times 1 half. Now, what we can do is we can kind of 
group it, because remember with fractions, we multiply the numerators and we multiply the denominators. Okay? And that would give us 1 times 1 times 1 is 1, one or 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8. Now, I want to show you something else over off to the side. Another way of thinking this problem is I could have thought about it as 1 cubed over 2 cubed. And if I'd memorized those off my lists, I know 1 cubed is 1 and 2 cubed is 8. So there's another way. All right, I've got another problem. This one's a little doozy because it requires us to do more than one step. And we've got 6 squared minus 3 squared. So this is where understanding our square root or perfect squares comes from. If I know what 6 squared is and 3 squared, I can get right to the answer. So I'm going to demonstrate that. So in my steps, first thing I'm going to do is the exponents. So I'm going to figure out what 6 squared is. And 6 times 6 is 36. So I get 36 minus, and then 3 squared, 3 times 3 is 9. Okay, so that's my first step. My second step is to do the operation. So 36 take away 9, uh, and remember, I don't know why people miss these questions, but they do. You gotta rename 16 take away 9 is 7, and then we have a 2. So my answer works out to 27. Okay, and then the last thing we're gonna do is follow another set of directions, which is actually simple because it doesn't ask us to do math. <laughs> I love that. So this direction says write each product. using an exponent. In other words, they're talking about exponential form. Okay? So, let's see. Number five. We have eight times eight times 8. So all I want us to do is write the base and how many times was it being multiplied? 3. That's it. You're done. So that is your exponential form. And then last but not least, number 6. We have 1 7th, uh, let's go back to this guy, times 1 7th, times 1 7th, times 1 7th, times 1 7th. Whew! So what we're going to do is we're going to write the base, which is 1 7th. Now, because it contains two numbers in it, a fraction in particular, I'm going to have to use parentheses, okay? And then I'm going to put the exponent. So the exponent showed up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times. Okay? So, a little note here, you must use parentheses if the base is a fraction or decimal. Okay? Alright, good luck with this guys, we'll talk to you about it later. Bye-bye.